This week, we're going to talk about competitive intelligence and market research. We'll define competitive intelligence. We'll also look at primary and secondary sources of competitive intelligence uh, and go over market research and what it is and how it contributes to, sh contributes to short term objectives and long term goals. So the assignments for the week, obviously the lecture and there is a competitive intelligence video clip uh, and I've included that link for you. There's also a market research and competitive advantage um, document that I've provided the hyperlink for you. Please be sure you read the case study on page six. And then there's a 10 step to strategic planning document that you need to read. There's not a deliverable this week. Now, you haven't had a deliverable probably within the past couple of weeks. My assumption is that you're using this time to develop your strategic plans. I recognize this is a big project, and so I wanted to give you time throughout the semester to work on that. So if you don't have a, a deliverable due, obviously, um, hopefully you, you've spent your time working on that, or at least conceptualizing how to put it together. All right, so let's go to the lecture. Competitive intelligence, what is it? It's the process of collecting and analyzing information about a competitor's strengths and weaknesses in a legal and ethical manner, in a legal and ethical manner to enhance business decision making. OK, very important. We're not talking about espionage here. We're not talking about spying on organizations. We're talking about using legal and ethical practices to learn about what's happening with competitors. And it can be grouped in the two main types, tactical competitive intelligence, which is more short, short term and seeks to provide input into issues such as capturing market share or increasing revenues, all right? The other strategic focuses more on the longer term issues such as key risk and opportunities facing the enterprise. So keep in mind, competitive intelligence is also around strengths and weaknesses of the competitor. We want to be well informed because the better informed we are, the better off our strategic plans will be. So it's not espionage, as you see down here uh, at the bottom. It's not espionage, which uses illegal and unethical methods to, methods to gain unfair competitive advantage. We don't do that. And I always tell folks, if you feel like you could be on the verge of unethical behavior, don't do it and consult legal counsel. So what about informational sources? How can you obtain this information? Well, you can obtain it through public information, personal experience. You can go straight to the source. You can talk to people you know. The, 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 what you want to do is be organized and have some, some, some thoughtful thinking around how you're going to do this. It shouldn't just be happenstance. It needs to be, there needs to be structure around this and, and a, a, a practices and procedures around how you do this. And that's the responsibility of the planning professional. So public information, this is just information that's publicly accessible. Um, we, we have our strategic planning meetings and uh, since we're, we're a big system, all of our planners from all of our different entities come together and we talk about what's in the news. We present what's in the news, what's in the news with our competitors. Um, and we, we glean that from public information. Uh, personal experience, uh, people's personal experiences with the competitor. You can go straight to the source. You can hire a third party market research firm uh, to conduct some of this, some of these analyses. Um, and then uh, people you know. So these are, again, ethical, safe methods of obtaining information. Health services organizations with strong planning functions integrate market research as part of their strategy. And so it's important to have individuals on your leadership team who have competencies around market research. And that's an expectation that we would, we would have from a planner, someone who's, whose work is really around planning. They should have a firm grasp on market research, what it is and how to do it. And there's two types, primary and secondary. Primary research is, is simply research that you 
uh, conduct yourself as an organization, even if you outsource it, another vendor, a vendor is actually doing the work. It's your data when it's all said and done. It's primary data collection. And then secondary research um, is conducted by another party but used by the organization. And so this is a lot of the public information that's available. Like if the hospital association releases an analysis that outlines market share based on Medicare claims data. And so that's not information that you collected. It comes from another source, but you use it to inform your strategy. You can also use geospatial uh, mapping techniques. We're seeing this more and more in the field. It's great. It's smart. It allows us to see visually, geographically, uh, health, health, health services patterns, utilization patterns. And you can see, I've seen some really fancy, fancy techniques where you can, this could be moving based on time of the day and you can see traffic flow uh, on weekends and mornings and evenings when it comes to all of these different providers. And so planners use this information to inform their, their strategy as well. You can also do scenario planning, and this occurs when um, when the future is just uncertain. I mean, this is a good practice when you just don't know, or if the industry is on the brink of dramatic change, or if there are just so many different opinions about the future, um, you can engage in scenario planning. Perfect example, the Affordable Care Act of 2010. So 2008, 2009, we all knew in healthcare that this was, you know, this was a possibility for the country and it was a big reform effort. And so we needed to plan accordingly. What if it passes? What if it doesn't pass? And so each one of those two conversations occurred in a very, very constructive way within our organization so that we would be prepared and ready to take action uh, depending on the outcome. 